Hi guys, Chiu here from Prodones. This video is going to be the last of the set for the conclusion of the DJI L1. So we're going to discuss about the attributes of the system. We're going to look through some data. Uh, I was told in the previous video, we had some small things missed out. So we're going to patch that back in, update you with it. We're going to see what kind of recommendations we can make. So let's dive in. Now, a logical question people want to ask is, how much is this going to cost? I'm not going to put a exact dollar figure down because it would depend on your configuration. But let's take a hypothetical setup. We will compare that with one of our packages of uh, another brand of a LiDAR system. We used to mount that on the M300. So we can do more or less an Apple to Apple configuration to compare the cost. So the M300 with the L1 is very straightforward. You just get the M300, battery station, batteries, the DRTK2. Now that helps a lot because uh, you can then do the PPK and the data is fed in directly as well. So this simplifies your data processing. The L1, of course, and DJI Terra, you will get it later after six months to do your processing. But let's put that in total cost of ownership. So let's say this adds up to X dollars, okay? It could be $100,000, it could be $50,000. Let's put it at X. Now, when we compare that with the other LiDAR system, you would have the same thing. You would purchase the drone, the battery station, the batteries, a DRTK2, uh, maybe not for the referencing, but at least you would have the drone flying in a stable fashion. So if you had any interference, you wouldn't have to worry. Then this is where it diverges. So you would have a base station typically for the LiDAR. Some of them have proprietary requirements. So you would have a custom setup that would require its own base station for the LiDAR system. The LiDAR system would typically also have some kind of a scanner. Storage is uh, usually some high speed USB drive or SD card. And optionally, you would have an RGB camera. Some have a camera, some don't. That would be another option, but let's put it in so that it's equal with the R1. And all LiDARs, as usual, come with a proprietary software to do processing. Now, you'll be looking at a grand total of three to four times the price of the L1 set. Now, that is uh, quite significant. Uh, you could use that money to buy more batteries, for example, or to lower your return of investment time. So that's where the major savings with the L1 come in. If we compare this with another LiDAR system, so the M300 with the L1, it's very similar to that system. You get one to three returns per pulse. The L1, you get your integrated RGB camera. So the settings and the camera triggering is automatic. Whereas for the third party system, it's a separate RGB camera. So it's a modular thing. The interesting part is actually two things. One is you have live processing. So you would have point clouds built in the remote so you can do your live view. Then you can check your work. So you will get instant view of where there is data, where there is no data, and you can work out what to do next to patch up that point. Whereas with the other, most other third party systems, they have no live view. So you would be left guessing. So you would have to do a rough process on the spot. The other one would be live GNSS data for accuracy check. So the nice part about this system is that you can actually see in real time how the RTK is working or not. So you would actually know whether you would have properly fixed RTK data. Now, this is a common occurrence with some systems. If you were to bring the whole system back after your flight, and then you were to crunch the data, you'll find that sometimes you would get RTK fixed, float, fixed, float, fixed, float, right? So there would be this problem uh, intermittently with some systems. And unless you go back to repeat the flight, there's no way to fix this problem. Whereas with the M300, especially with the DRTK2, you will get a very strong fix and it wouldn't move. It wouldn't budge. You will normally stay fixed unless you lose a uh, connection with the drone. The other part I would put is for some systems, the processing steps are more complicated. So some of them not only use one, but they use two softwares sometimes even three, to crunch all the data just to get to the same final point where Terra will bring you to, which is the final LAS point cloud. That is another advantage, especially for those who lack experience in handling such a system. And one final part would be the gimbal. So the gimbal provides better image quality. It provides better LiDAR data because it's always guaranteed to be pointing downwards to where you want the data. So in that case, you would actually get a higher quality images due to the stabilization, as well as a much better point cloud, more consistent point cloud. So I was told the last time around, certain things were missing from the previous videos. 
So I'm going to show you what it is now. So let's take a cross section look again. That was definitely missing. So let's take the roof of this building. So what you see here is a scattering of points and now we do some simple measurements. So this is the L1 width optimization. So you get about 24 centimeters of vertical height. If we compare that without the optimization, you will get a much larger figure. So this is close to 30 centimeters. If we compare that with the Phantom 4R, now that is definitely the most compact one that is only 15 centimeters. So 15 centimeters will give you plus minus 7.5 centimeters error, which is not bad. And also, um, just to give you a comparison, now this is from the Phantom 4R. If you were to do a classification of ground, which you can, and then after that, you were to view only the ground. So we disable everything but the ground, apply. So you will see there's a lot of hollow points, and this is where the vegetation is. You can see wherever there's thick vegetation, there is not much ground points. So this is actually the downside of photogrammetry. People ask um, if you can do this with photogrammetry. Yeah, you can to a certain point. When you start having heavy vegetation, then that's where you lack the data. That's where the LiDAR is better. So if you compare that with the L1, what you see is true, it's not as dense everywhere. But what you do get is that the points are scattered everywhere. So you ha still have ground points here and here. So this is very uh, more obvious, uh, especially when you do this. So once we generated the contour map, this is for the L1. So as you can see, it's a very predictable, you know, downward slope, elevation, this kind of data. If you look at the Phantom 4R data, what you would get is a lot of noise. Right? So this is all the blank spots filled in by interpolation. Now this is evident here when you do the digital elevation model. So what you'll see here is a lot of these hollow points which were part of the lake and uh, parts that are covered by, by vegetation. So if you look with vegetation, uh, let's go by RGB. So you can see here is a lot of vegetation. And what happens is you get it filled in by software and you're going to get holes. So this will mean when you do generate contours, you're going to have to do a lot of cleaning up. Now if we compare that with the L1, it's a much more smooth, predictable and expected output. So you actually get what we could call true ground. So is the L1 the tool to replace your conventional LiDAR system? Well, it has some good attributes. It's great as a downward mapping tool. It has a very strong laser beam, many returns for the distance. It has a reasonably wide beam coverage. The RGB camera reduces acquisition time and with the gimbal stability, what you get is good pictures and always correctly pointed data. It's also easy to use. You don't have a lot of extra setup to do. It's compact, you know, it's this small, it's well integrated. You just plug it into the drone, you have your live views. It takes away all your guesswork. You are assured of your job, you, know, you get your covered data. And post-processing is easy. It's as simple as just copying the data in, selecting your output options and just go. The accuracy is good. I wouldn't say it's great, but for a device of its price, yeah, it's pretty good accuracy. On the other hand, it's going to be a dedicated low altitude mapping tool. So number one, the drone doesn't fly that high. You get a 500 meters maximum altitude from ground. You have an effective beam range of 190 meters. So if you look in the specifications, you've got 190 meters at 100 kilolux on a 20% reflective surface. So that would be your road, your vegetated surfaces and anything that is slightly reflective, like if you have stream runoffs and things like that. So that is going to cover most of the situations that you're going to encounter. So 190 meters is most likely the maximum altitude you're going to be working with. You have a beam that is like a torchlight, so it has a limited uh, field of view. It's not like the conventional LiDARs which go 360. And in a complex environment, that's what you want. You're not only going to get data below you, you're going to get data 45 degrees to the side. You know, let's say if you're in an oil and gas refinery and you have a lot of pipes running to your left, to your right, bottom, below. Your ability to cover data is much greater in that case. Or let's say you're scanning a building with a lot of features, that is going to help you can do it in a single pass. Whereas with this one, you're going to have to do multiple oblique passes to cover all of the same data. 
and it's only limited to three returns maximum so it's not going to replace your high-end regals those uh, full waveform lidars this is not going to cover that who is the l14 as you can see the price point is the number one feature so it comes in at a much lower price point as we saw earlier it's going to be for first of all the inexperienced those who have never used a conventional lidar system there's actually quite a bit of setup work beforehand for example you would have another base station that will work with your lidar system calibrations and things like that so this one does the calibration flights and everything already and if you were to use a conventional lidar system you would have to work that calibration flight path into your automated flight planning mission so that would be the case so power line inspectors, forestry management, uh, oil and gas pipeline inspectors, uh, land surveyors, search and rescue. So the nice part about the LiDAR system is that you can actually do below canopy mapping or you can actually do terrain mapping, which means, uh, let's say if you're not sure about the area ahead or where you're going to go, uh, yeah, it's fine to have a thermal camera. You can see people, but you can't see the terrain. So what this will give you is uh, if you fly paths, you're going to get terrain data and you can plot your way power around to do your search and rescue and things like that. It's for those who want to do hassle-free LiDAR mapping. That means, so you just buy this and just plonk it in and start getting data. It's for those who want to do corridor surveys, especially like power line inspectors, forestry management. It's simple enough that if you don't need that absolute precision, you can just figure out your tree trunk size, your canopy size, things like that, canopy heights, or oh, and I guess pipeline surveyors. You get to check your corridor, uh, vegetation encroachment things like that so those are mostly downward firing long distance flying kind of work another interesting use that we've been actually asked about is actually search and rescue for the search is because it has some vegetation penetration capability so you can actually start seeing features underneath canopy for the rescue part you can work at night so you can just fly over and get terrain data and work out where a crevasse is where if there are valleys or something like that you can work it out with this system. Now I get asked this a few times already. So is this going to be a game changing piece of equipment? It is in many ways. For example, it's the first to have a system this complete at such a low price point. That's the most important thing. So it's good to have bring in for the uninitiated. So if you have very little experience in handling LiDAR systems, if you are the experienced user, then you would appreciate the fact that it's quite hassle-free to use. It's a lot simpler to operate. The setup time is a lot shorter. So you would consider it a game changer in that sense where it's compact, it's light, it's small, it's on a gimbal, it's easy to use. Uh, for the power line inspectors, oil and gas pipeline inspectors. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you liked the video. If you do, please click like, subscribe, and as always, fly safe.